This is how you use VLOOKUP to bring data together from different data sets in five easy steps. Let's go. Let's say your boss sends you this small list of order numbers and you need to find out who sold those specific orders. Now, you have that data in another file, uh, in another sheet with more data, and it looks something like this. So this is your order database, and the primary sheet to the left is the ones where you need to find out who sold the specific orders. Now, instead of looking through all the orders in the big sheet uh, manually, which would take forever, you can use VLOOKUP to do that. So VLOOKUP would look for the specific order number here from the primary sheet in the order database column with orders, and it will find it there. Then it would go to the right into the sales rep column and return that specific sales representative into the primary sheet to the left. And obviously you can copy down that formula so it does the same for all these four different orders. In Excel, we have an example that's almost identical here. Your boss sent you this list of order numbers and you need to look through your order database to find out who sold those specific orders and, and write that down here. Now, you can obviously do that with the VLOOKUP function and you should use VLOOKUP or another lookup function here. So step number one is simply to write equal and then the VLOOKUP function name and an open parenthesis. That was probably the easiest step of all these five steps that I'm gonna explain to you here. So now you can see the syntax down here, and this is the lookup value, table array, column index number, and range lookup arguments of the syntax. And I'm gonna walk you through each one of those individually. So step number two, the lookup value, that is what you're looking for. And you are looking for the order numbers. So you're gonna select that right here, the order number, and hit a comma to separate the arguments. So that was also a pretty easy step. The lookup value is simply what you wanna look up for. Now the table array is a little bit more complex because the table array argument is step number three in this video. And it's the data set that holds both the data you are looking for. So it, it, it needs to hold the lookup values, but it also needs to hold what you want to return. In this example, it's pretty simple. In the real world, it's also quite simple, but it just sounds a bit complicated. So the table array in this case is column A through C here. Now, what's important to note is that the table array, as I mentioned before, must contain both the values you're looking for and the values you wanna return. So the values we're looking for are the order numbers, and those are found here over in column A. And what we need to return is actually the sales representative, so that's here in column B. So actually, it doesn't need to be A to C, it, it could just be A to B, because it needs to hold those two things, what we're looking for and what we want to return. Typically, you just select the entire data set here. That's much easier than going in and assessing whether or not both columns are present. So select everything here. The values you're looking for, so the lookup values, must be found in the leftmost column of the table array. So it looks from left to right. Just as I showed you in the example before, it looks for the order number in the leftmost column of the columns you selected here as the table array and then it returns something from one of the other columns. And which one of these columns we determine here in the next argument, which is the column index number. And that's step number four of this guide. And that is what you want to return. Now here you have the entire table array. And in this argument, in the column index number, you determine what to return. So you write a number that corresponds to a column in the table array. So column one would return the, an, the order number. So in, in that case, you would have the order number and the order number. Now, if you write two instead, you return the sales representatives because that is the second column of the table array. And if you write three, that is the price because that is the third column in the table array. Now, obviously here we need to return the sales representatives and those are in column two 
in the table array. So write that and a comma to separate the arguments. I have an important comment about the table array that I need to mention in the end of the video. So make sure you watch that. And if you like this video so far, please give it a like and hit the subscribe button to support the channel. Thanks. Now for step number five, the last part of the VLOOKUP function, you must determine whether or not the range you look up should be true or false. Now I could make an entire video about the meaning of true and false here. So I'm not going to bore you with the explanation for this. Just know that you should always, unless you have a very specific reason not to, you need to use the false argument here. So you can just write false or you can uh, click it here in the in the drop down because you will need the exact match option. And it basically just means that we need to find this that specific order number, not something that's close to it. We need to find that specific order number. If we don't find it, the function should return an error. That's basically what we're saying here. So just pick or write false to do a uh, an exact match VLOOKUP here. And that's it. Hit enter. And there you have it. The sales representative for order number 8523 is NH right here. And if we copy that down to the other cells, you can see that it finds them easily. Pretty cool. As I mentioned before, I had a pretty important comment about the table array, and that's something you just need to know and understand in order to understand the VLOOKUP function completely. So let's try again VLOOKUP and we are looking for the order number and we are looking for the order numbers over here in column B this time. Now, what I just did here is to insert an empty column here in column A so that the table array is shifted one column to the right. That means that the references are uh, different from the, the first function we used. The reference for the data sets are columns B through D instead of A through C. Now, that doesn't change the column index number. One could believe that the that, that column A was always going to be column index number one and column B was always going to be in column index number two, etc. But that's not the case. The column index number is the index number within the number of the column within the table array, not within Excel in general. So in this case, the column index number is also number two because it's the sales rep we want to return. Although that is now column Z, this time instead of column B. So it's relative to the table array. And that is an important comment and something you needed to know to understand the VLOOKUP function. VLOOKUP is one of the most popular functions of all time in Excel, but there are actually two functions that are better. And that is XLOOKUP that you can learn more about in this video up here and also index match. And you can learn more about that lookup function in this video down here. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.